result of one of the viewers. And let me tell you what happened. So this, this little YouTube show, not so little anymore that I do, is, is kind of my passion, my hobby, but I have a real job where I produce online education for a few companies that I work with. And one of my favorite jobs is producing these summits. You might know me from the Truth About Weight Loss Summit for the last two years. And this year I'm doing a summit or hosting, I co-produce it with my partner, Toby in Germany, a summit called the GI Health Summit. And as I was interviewing something like 30 gastroenterologists, at least two of them had mentioned that there is a, an ingredient that is prevalent in many of the non-dairy milks, things like emulsifiers that are not only deleterious to our health in general, but particularly to our gut for people that already have compromised GI health and GI issues. And I was, I didn't know this and I immediately stopped buying plant milk in a box. Now, if you follow me on YouTube for the last 10 years, I've done several episodes where I've showed you, you can make your own milk. You just grind up some nuts in your Vitamix or even use almond butter and it's okay but it never seems to last and it never seems to taste that great. So one of the viewers watching live had told me about a product from Joy Foods that she used. And this comes in both organic and not organic in almond and in cashew. And I really wanted to try it. And I was blown away. Well, first of all, it's very easy to make because you just put it in the blender with some water and blend for 30 seconds. But what was really different about this product is it stayed looking like this. Whenever I've attempted to make my own plant milk, regardless of what plant I use, after a few hours, it separates and it just never seemed to last that long in the refrigerator. But this does just like the boxed milks and it tastes way better. And for some reason it's shelf stable, not once you blend it, but which I don't know how. So we are gonna to talk to the co-founder of Joy Foods. His name is Tony Jimenez and we're gonna find out why he invented this product, how, and why it might be something you want to add to your life. And he's generously offering everybody a 10% discount. Please welcome Tony Jimenez, who, by the way, is vegan. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Chef AJ. Pleasure to be with you. Yeah, so talk, 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 box. You know, as, as somebody who's been vegan for 43 years, I know not everybody's going to be vegan, but if people could make one change in the direction to optimal health, I, along with many of the doctors that I work with and for, say, give up dairy. It's, you don't need it. Only hum humans are the only species that drink milk from another species or after maturity. And when I became vegan in 1977, there were no boxed milks. There was not even powdered soy milk. And now you can go to any store anywhere in the United States, even the 99 cent store, and find plant milk probably 15 different kinds. So what what made you passionate about uh, doing this? And tell us a little bit about the product because I know people are saying, well, you can make it yourself, it's cheaper, but yeah, it's just not as good. Yours is actually tastes really good. <laughs> yeah, no, th thanks Chef AJ, I really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, I mean, for all the reasons you just mentioned, it's, um, it's, 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 it's why we're passionate about what we do. Um, everything from the health related uh, aspects of this, to um, the, the sustainability aspects, to um, just ev overall planet health, people health. Uh, we're really driven about what we do and how we do it. Um, you know, much like you, uh, I, was, I was severely affected by the boxed sort of plant-based milks that you were talking about. And um, when you think about all of the ingredients that go into those boxed uh, plant-based milks. A lot of people don't realize it, but a lot of these brands are essentially 98% water gums, binders, uh, emulsifiers, gums, basically just chemicals designed to extend shelf life in a grocery shelf. So when you kind of parse it all out and you look at what you're drinking, you're actually drinking a lot of chemicals, uh, some water, and usually only about 2% of the featured ingredient. So if it's almond milk, about 2% almond. And by the way, that almond that you're drinking, it's, it's extracted and sort of processed almond. Uh, so you're not getting the full macros of, you know, what planet Earth made the almond with. So you're not getting the proteins, you're not getting the fiber uh, that we all go to almond for. So um, kind of looking at that and, and, you know, walking down a grocery aisle and, and realizing what these beverages are, um, because that's what they are. They're, they're basically water flavored beverages. Um, we kind of took a step back and said, you know, not everybody is going to want to make, going to want to go through the um, home making plant-based milk process. Um, you know, everybody has, everyone has a job. Everyone has something to do at home. They really don't have the time to kind of go through this whole process. So um, we 
we wanted to make it the most convenient way possible for everybody to access the highest quality, the highest nutrient dense plant-based milk option available. And so when you look at the spectrum of what's available out there, it's you walk into a grocery store and you have the box stuff. That is just what I explained. And then you have kind of going through the whole homemaking process, which it tastes delicious. It's amazing. It's, um, you know, once you taste it, you're like, I'm never going to have the box stuff again. Uh, but again, it does take time. It takes several pieces of equipment. You have to buy almonds. You have to usually soak them overnight. And it could end up being a 24 hour process when, you know, is all said and done. So putting that to the side, we kind of said, Hey, there's an opportunity here to increase convenience, increase access to, to folks that don't want to, don't want to do this whole process. Uh, but also educate, uh, in the process and educate folks to open their eyes that the, the, the boxed milks are just not really what they think that they're drinking. And what we came up with is a shelf stable, uh, single ingredient, uh, what we call a nut base. So, uh, essentially we figured out a very unique way to kind of break down, um, let's use the almond for instance, the almond into a fine particulate size while re retaining all of its natural and raw properties. So um, we put that into a paste format. And so for those of you listening that uh, aren't familiar with our product, it's essentially like a tahini paste um, is what it looks like. And uh, yeah, I can show right it up, guys, it looks yep. like this. It That's smells right. good. It tastes good. I don't know how it's shelf stable, but I, I especially like the cashew. They're both good, but the, uh, we, we did a blind taste test and, and I really love this one. That doesn't surprise me. I mean, I, I, everyone always thinks almond milk first and then we kind of like, yeah, just give cashew a try. And next thing you know, they never order the almond again. It's just, you know, they love cashew and they're not only making milk with it, but we'll get into that later. But uh, anyways, we... Um, uh, we, we created this, this nut base and it's shelf stable. Uh, you know, who would have thought that, um, you know, almonds uh, grown off a tree have all of the natural sort of um, factors to make itself a shelf stable product. So we don't add any preservatives. We don't add any additives. Um, this is as pure as a format as it can possibly come in. Um, so that's why it can sit in your pantry at room temperature for up to 18 months. Um, and as chef AJ was talking about, um, it makes a beautiful, uh, almond milk. It makes a beautiful plant-based milk, uh, when all you, that you're doing is adding water, you're blending water with, uh, with our product and you get, um, uh, it's really like, it's a bright white, um, when you put it next to, um, cow's milk, I mean, you can put it next to cow's milk and it'll be brighter white than cow's milk. Um, and you'll see the difference when you, when you compare it to the rest of the sort of leading brand, uh, plant-based milks, there's usually a, like a gray sort of hue to them, which makes it look a bit murky. Um, this is kind of a, a, a very sort of shocking bright white that you get. Um, and so, yeah. And so once you, once you create the milk, uh, it could sit into, in your fridge for, uh, well over seven days. So you get anywhere from a seven to 10 day shelf life in your fridge. Uh, which is quite rare for plant-based milks that are made at home. Yeah, and, and even the boxed ones, once you open them, don't last that long. I love your explanation about how the boxed milks are basically water and chemicals because I could never figure out how when you made the, the plant milk yourself from nuts, it was like maybe you know 90 calories, but in the box, it was like 40. Well, that makes sense because you're not really getting the nut, you're getting the water. That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, naturally our, our product... So, you know, one of the things that people say is they, they kind of scratch their head and, and they look at our sort of our, our, our 15 ounce um, uh, tub and they say, wow, you know, given the price and you compare it to the quartz of the other brands, it seems like, you know, joy might be way expensive. Um, in reality, it's actually cheaper. Uh, so what happens is that, um, you, you can essentially save money using our product because you control the dilution ratio. So one of the things that we're really passionate about is saying, hey, you know, we're not going to create some ready to drink formula for you that, you know, we tinkered in a lab and kind of created, oh, this is what, you know, the consumer market is going to love. And this is the perfect taste. We want you to create your own taste. Um, we want to empower our customer to say, hey, 
you know, I like making my almond milk with a date and a sprinkle of cinnamon and, and you know, perhaps a little bit of agave. Um, we want you to do that. We want you to kind of just make this your own. Um, and what essentially we're doing is empowering you to um, have greater access in a much more convenient fashion to make it at home, uh, but that it only takes a couple seconds. So uh, when you think about how we price our product, it's actually um, we can compete with anything from Almond Breeze to, um, you know, the highest end sort of premium homemade almond milk uh, brand out there. Uh, so uh, for what we say is for every uh, 15 ounce um, tub that we sell, you can make up to seven quarts of, uh, of almond milk. So when you're thinking about the sustainability factor that we are not shipping basically a full truckload of water. Um, across state lines. Um, and then you think about the carbon footprint associated with that. Uh, but not only that, we're using the entire almond versus using an almond and then basically filtering water through it and then discarding the rest of the almond. We're, we're actually allowing you to use the entirety of the almond. So our sustainability comes in literally from, um, from the nut all the way to the milk. And, uh, and that's something we're extremely passionate about as well. Great. So I have a bunch of questions. I'll start with this one from Pat. She says, my husband likes oat milk. Do you have plans for that? I'm ordering the cashew now. Guys, be sure to use the Chef AJ discount for 10% off if you do order. And Mary says, I love rice milk because I have nut allergies. So do you have any plans for nut-free products for, with this same idea? Absolutely. And uh, we're well aware of that. So um, just to give your, your listeners a bit of a context, we're a very young brand. We're only about a year and a half old. We launched April of last year. Uh, so that said, you know, as an entrepreneur, I wanted to launch with 25 different products on day one. Uh, just from a business case scenario, that doesn't really play out well, um, you know. So what we've had to do is really just focus on, I guess, what, what has been adopted in, in, in a greater audience uh, from the onset. And we decided just, it was a business decision to say, let's start with almond. It's, it's the largest sort of plant-based milk market um, that we can address to start off with. Kind of learn, learn from our customers uh, from there and then kind of start adding on new products as we go. So we're very much in that sort of growth phase now. So um, we've had an amazing reaction in the last year and a half, uh, not only from our consumer uh, customers, but also from uh, we have a, a basically a food service portfolio where we sell to cafes, restaurants, chefs, um, and other brands actually that use our product to, to make their own end products. So um, to answer the, the viewers' questions, yes, absolutely. We, uh, we fully intend our, and are deep into a, an R&D process right now that will provide a non-nut um, option. And, uh, and we're really excited to, uh, to, to share that with uh, with, with, our, with our members very soon. Well, when that comes out, we'll have you back and we can talk about that, Tony, because that sounds amazing. So uh, we go through a lot of plant milk here because I use it in, in my soups and my husband does a lot of smoothies. And one of the things that I love about this product is it doesn't take up very many, much space. So we don't live near a grocery store anymore. And when I lived in Los Angeles, I lived next door to Trader Joe's, but now the closest store is 20 minutes away. And especially with the pandemic, this is like having so many boxes on your shelf and you can keep this is what I don't understand because when you have almond butter or cashew butter once you open it it has to go in the fridge how the heck did you make this shelf stable yeah so again it's um you know it's it's really interesting but um the the shelf stability comes from mother nature um the compounds and everything you know that people try to commit chemically sort of alter and design for, they're already provided to us by mother nature. And um, there's very little that we needed to do mm -hmm. to kind of make this shelf stable. Um, uh, you know, our, our sort of, our secret sauce is in the way that we process the almond. Um, and it may seem counterintuitive, but we actually do very little in the process. Um, it's, it's essentially, you know, we're breaking down the almond to a particular particulate size um, that allows us that allows our product to sort of have this consistency this shelf stability uh, but essentially it um, it prevents us from having to add anything to it uh, so you know it's um, there is a there is a shelf uh, life difference between cashew and almond uh, almond is about 18 months and cashews are about 
12 months. So the cashews do have a bit uh, shorter shelf life. Um, and I'm not the, the food scientist of the crew, but um, from my understanding, it is that almonds actually have a little bit of a higher fat uh, content than, than a cashew does. And so um, that fat actually allows uh, an extended shelf life uh, for the almond versus the cashew. That's great. So uh, Valeria wants to know, is this a nut butter? And Catherine wants to know, are, are the nuts organic? Sure. So um, uh, I'll start with the second question first. Organic, yes, we have both organic almond and organic cashew. So yes, we are organic. Um, and to answer the first question, the... Um, can you remember what was it? What was that first question again? Um, it, okay, so Valeria wants to know: Is this a nut butter, and how do you use it? Right. So, so Valeria, it we are technically not considered a nut butter per the per the USDA definition uh, and FDA. Um, so, nut butters, um, just to give you a little bit of background, they go through essentially like a double cooking process. First, they're roasted. Um, and then they go through a very traditional milling process. Milling is basically just the way that you break down um, uh, uh, nuts. And it's, it essentially, um, almonds specifically, they are so dense in structure that once you start a milling process, the, the heat that is caused by that friction gets so, so high that um, it actually cooks it again. So we prevent all this from happening. We, one, we, we don't roast the nuts. Um, and two, we have basically a, 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 a processing um, system that does not allow it to expose itself to heat. Um, so, so we kind of retain the raw material in its most natural state, uh, therefore not, not officially becoming a nut butter. Great. So here's a question from, sorry, it goes very fast. Um, well, here's a nice question from Cheryl. What is the background uh, that you came up with this idea? So what is your background that you came up with this idea? Sure, so um, it's, been, it's been a long journey to get to where we are today, but um, as I was sharing with, with Chef AJ before, um, I've been making my own plant-based milks for well over a decade. And, um, you know, it, it it just, you know, like every, I guess, entrepreneurial journey, everything has its own twists and turns. But, um, you know, in, in, the, in the very early days, um, the idea was actually um, to actually create a, a Nespresso machine type machine, right? So, you know, we identified, hey, the boxed, the boxed milks are full of chemicals, binders, gum stabilizers, and the at-home process is just kind of long and tedious. So the original idea was actually we were going to, we spent like three years uh, actually trying to do this. But um, again, it was to make kind of the Nespresso machine of almond milks. So think, you know, you have a, a Nespresso type looking machine, you stick in a pod, press a button, and now comes fresh homemade almond milk. Uh, again, so we spent about three years pursuing that idea. Um, the moment that we actually achieved in kind of creating this, uh, this type of device we said, hey, this is really cool. And, you know, we finally did it. But um, we essentially just created a single purpose water blender. Uh, because why are we going to force our customer to buy a piece of hardware when the same output can be generated by a, a home kitchen blender? So we quickly ditched the, the hardware idea and realized that the true innovation of what we had just forced ourselves to engineer was actually the food product that we were going to stick in the pod. And when we kind of like looked up and realized, oh, wow, nobody else is doing this. This doesn't exist in the marketplace. Let's go after this. This is, this is a massive and, and sort of significantly better option than what's out there. Uh, let's focus on that. And that's what we did. And, and that's kind of how, how we ended up here. Um, as, as far as kind of like, you know, how, how we came together, uh, my, my co-founders and I, we, we actually met. We were doing an MBA program out in San Francisco. Um, and uh, specifically in design strategies. So for all you sort of tech nerds out there, um, design strategy is kind of the philosophy that Steve, uh, Steve Jobs used to come up with all the cool innovation that he came up with at Apple. Uh, and so we applied this process to our thinking about how we were gonna find a solution for, for almond milk. 
Um, and my co-founders, one grew up in Minneapolis and, you know, basically a big dairy state drank, you know, cow's milk his whole life. And when he met us in San Francisco, he quickly realized that he was severely lactose intolerant and realized, oh, wow, basically dairy is the reason why my skin is like breaking out and having so many GI issues. And, uh, and our other partner is, um, is Asian from Hong Kong. And she grew up in a culture where it was just, you make your own um, soy, basically homemade soy milk uh, was just kind of the, the normal sort of consumer behavior um, back home. So that's kind of the, the origin of, uh, of, of our brand. Nice. So, you know, people are mentioning that they buy soy milk that has just soybeans and water. And that's great. If you're going to buy something, you want to buy it as clean as possible. I happen to be allergic to soy, so I don't have that option. But even so, every time you buy it in a box, you know, it's packaging, it's packaging. And yes, there is packaging in here. But isn't this like, um, this is like 30 quarts, right? Yeah, so, so you can make up to seven quarts with that one specifically. Um, you can, and again, you can make up to 14 quarts, you can make up to four quarts. It's really, it depends on the, on the dilution ratio at which you make your, your milk. Uh, but yes, you do have the ability to kind of make it as sustainable as, as you like and um, um, as efficient as you like. Uh, we also, we're, we're also very conscious of the, the packaging. Um, and so right now we're using 100% recyclable uh, plastic. That said, we don't want to be using plastic. Um, it's just, it's, it's the most sort of accessible packaging product that we had at the, at the moment. But I'm also excited to share that, uh, that we're going to be rolling out new, uh, much more sustainable packaging in the very near future. Great. Do you think it'll ever be available in stores? Because I know it's right now, it's only mail order and I'm posting links if people want to try it. Thank you. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I mean, eventually we, we do want to be in stores. Um, just, it's a, it's a business decision right now not to be in a store. Um, just cause you know, we're a new product, we're a new category. And if we were to be in a store, it'd be kind of, uh, you know, it'd be a challenge for the customer to kind of figure out what we are if we're sitting on a shelf versus, um, you find us online and we can tell you a story behind the brand. Nice. Why do companies put in things like vitamin A, palmitate, and carrageenan? And it, I mean, because it, it's clearly not necessary. Is it because these, these food additives are addictive and make them like the product more? Or is it just all about shelf stability? It's, 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 a, <coughs> excuse me. it's a factor of a few of those things. Um, so mainly when, when they're kind of uh, labeled as a vitamin or as a something of that nature, it it's, it's, tends to be, it's not it tends to be code for some sort of um, shelf stabilizer, um, some sort of preservative usually, uh, or it might be a good binding agent for one of the other sort of ingredients that's in the, that's in the ingredient label list. Uh, so there's really a myriad of reasons why they would put that. Uh, one, of, one of the other things I find interesting about the, the sort of the plant-based milk sector is if you kind of do a taste testing between, and, I, and we do this very frequently. If you buy all the brands, put them next to each other, you, you realize that um, what most brand, and I mean like 95% of the brands out there, what they're trying to do is they're trying to mimic the taste of cow's milk. They're not trying to give you, hey, this is almond milk and it tastes like almonds. No, they're trying to give you something that tastes closest to cow's milk. And we, we think very differently from that. We think, hey, you know what? And one of, one of the things that we say, um, if you go onto our website is, let us show you almond milk for the very first time. No, seriously, for the very first time, because we wanna embrace the taste of almonds. I mean, people like the taste of almonds. Why, why would you shy away from that? Um, so it's really a, a lot of these mass produced boxed uh, plant-based milks are really literally the, the flavor profile is being designed to mimic the taste of cow's milk. And by the way, same goes for oat, uh, for oat. Um, a lot of them are, so oat, I love, I love oat milk, by the way, I think it's amazing. And especially for, for those with nut allergies, I think, I think it's an incredible alternative. Um, but oat actually allows itself to get even closer to the taste of cow's milk because essentially what, you know, um, oat milk, and, and the brands that have made it popular is it's, it's, there is a, a significant introduction of oil uh, with water and then you have the oats. So where 
you know, almonds have a high concentration of fat content that allows it to kind of give you that mouthfeel. Oats don't have any of that fat. So you have to introduce it. Um, so when you're drinking oat milk, just be, just be aware that you're, you know, you are drinking added oils um, into the beverage. Uh, and that's not to take away that from the fact that, you know, it, it acts great in coffee and, and, uh, and it has a great flavor profile um, because we were, you know, very much in agreement there. But uh, one of the things that we want people to be aware is that, you know, at the end of the day, oat milk has uh, a lot of added oil. Wow. Yeah. And, when, and my people, myself included, we avoid added oils. Christine says, is there an advantage to this as compared to making your own? Is there no straining? Well, not only is there no straining, but this has been sitting here since we, this doesn't separate like homemade. Yeah, no, great question. So yeah, one of the things that, that I love about the invention for my own, for my own purposes was one, you don't have to soak, uh, you don't have to soak the nuts and you don't have to squeeze it out through the nut bag. So no, you do not have to filter out. And that's one of the things that we love. And one of the reasons why we believe our, our taste profile is so unique um, and it's so robust because we're giving you, again, we're giving you 100% of the nut versus sort of extracting a filtered beverage that goes through nuts, much like coffee. And then you have to sort of extract um, the, the almond meal that's left over. So. So no, you do not have to filter. You're getting um, basically full fat, uh, unadulterated almond and cashew in a way you've probably never drank it before. Right. Claudia says, are, do you have UK distributors? Is this only available in the United States right now? Yeah, so we're, we're US only uh, for the moment. Actually, we just, um, we just added in Canada um, so we can distribute into Canada. Um, and we can, we're, we're going to slowly start adding a few other countries outside of the U S uh, we just brought in sort of the capability to do so. Um, and little by little, we have a lot of ongoing conversations now with other countries throughout the world, including Japan, South Africa, uh, Europe, Middle East. Uh, so we have a lot of folks in a lot of countries that we're talking to, but, uh, currently we do not have distribution into the UK, unfortunately, but we hope to be there very soon. Stephanie says, if you use it for a soup, do you still need to blend it first with water or will it dissolve naturally to a smooth, creamy consistency? Yeah, no, gr great question. So, you know, much like, um, so my wife and I do part of our, our routines in the morning um, is, is twofold. One, I, I'm a, I have to have a smoothie when I wake up in the morning. Um, so I don't make milk to make my smoothie. I literally just dump a spoonful of joy into the blender along with the rest of the contents of my smoothie. Uh, so I don't make, I, I don't pre-make my milk to then dump it into the smoothie to, to, to make my smoothie. I just, I go right in. And then my, my wife, on the other hand, she loves having it already made because she likes to have it with her coffee. Uh, so she uses it more as a creamer. Um, so just kind of two different case scenarios there to, to uh, two different applications just in our own household. So as for a soup, yeah, you, you don't need to make it uh, prior. Um, in fact, uh, you know, I, I, I'm definitely, I consider myself a home chef and I love working with joy. Um, and you do not need to, to pre-make anything with it, uh, to add it into a soup. Um, same goes for, you know, if you want to make like sort of an Alfredo sauce, uh, for your pasta, you just throw it right onto the pan directly and, uh, and you'll get a beautiful sort of Alfredo. Terrific. Well, speaking of coffee, coffee, Camellia says, does it foam for lattes? It foam. It's so you know, one of the funny things about when we started with our with our company and um, before we, we had even called it Joy was, you know, hey, let's test this out with some baristas and kind of see what, the, you know, what they think. Um, you know, I can't make this up, but basically the first few demos that we did with with baristas, they would kind of they would froth it and then be like they would kind of like take a step back and be like, What'd you guys put in this? Like they, they didn't believe us. They were like, no, nah, no, nah, this is cow's milk or you did something weird here. It was like if it was black magic. So in a way, um, our product actually froths even better than cow's milk um, because of, again, it, it's that, that unadulterated plant fat content that it has. And that's what it allows it to froth really nicely. And it, and it gives it those micro bubbles that baristas are after to give it that sort of thick foamy look. Uh, and again, it's bright white. So if you're into latte art and you, you want to do some latte art with your cappuccino or your latte, uh, you'll be able to do some cool stuff with it. 
That's great. People don't realize, because I strictly avoid sugars, that sometimes when you go to coffee houses or smoothie places, that yes, they may have almond milk and soy milk, but it often contains sugar in it. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. Yeah. Terrific. Uh, Pumpkin says, are the nuts GMO free? I think if it's organic, it would have to be, right? That, yeah. So, um, so almonds inherently um, are, uh, there is no species in existence that GMO. So uh, they are all non-GMO. That's great. Uh, Valeria says, how to use it? Well, I think you use it any way you use any kind of non-dairy milk or regular milk. Yeah, and, and, and I would add to that and kind of what we like to say is joy stands for just one ingredient, but endless possibilities. So uh, best way to think of joy, it's like kind of a Swiss army knife in your kitchen. Um, you can get really creative with it. So anything from baked goods to pastries to ice creams to salad dressing, sauces, milks, uh, you name it, fill in the blank. There's probably a, a role for joy to play in that recipe. Uh, so, you know, one, one of the, the, the most beautiful things about this sort of entrepreneurial journey with our brand has been just giving joy to, to you know, high-end culinary chefs and just telling them, hey, would love your input and just kind of get a feedback on, on what you think of our product. And some of these really, you know, very well-known chefs coming back to us with their eyes wide open and being like, I've never been able to create fill in the blank. Um, and then we're like, what you did? What with our butter? Like this, this is crazy. Uh, so, um, one of the things that, that really blew us away was, um, was a chef that did, um, traditional French styled butters with our product. And he's like, I had, I had never been able to achieve this type of consistency or this type of flavor, this type of texture until I used joy. Um, and that same guy, he came up with, um, these beautiful like French styled croissants uh, that he used with our, uh, with, our, with our product. So it's really, a, it's, I mean, we get, we get surprised and, and um, uh, almost on a daily basis by, by folks all over. And now it's our customers just kind of reaching back out to us and sending us their recipes like, Hey, I made, you know, so-and-so. And like, it's, we're, we're honestly, we're wowed by our product every day. I mean, we learn about our product every day. It's, it's uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Not to change subjects, but do people tell you you look like Wolverine? <laughs> I'll take it as a compliment. Thank oh, you. Oh, yeah, no, Hugh Jackman, man, that is a compliment. So you wouldn't, though, take it, though, just to make a nut butter sandwich, would you? That would kind of be a waste, don't you think? No, I mean, um, my wife, she loves the taste of cashew by itself. And, like, you know, when she's not sneaking, like, a spoonful of it um, – directly to her mouth she's spreading it on a piece of toast and throwing on blueberries and bananas and having it as such so nice. absolutely yeah cool christine says does refrigerating extend shelf life now once we make it tony then we do have to refrigerate it right absolutely once yeah so so sure um yeah it, you can you can extend the the shelf life of um of our product in its in its uh in its natural state in the um in the in the pail um, by putting it into the into the refrigerator, but once you make the milk, then then the the clock definitely starts as as it would for for homemade almond milk. That said, we have um, we have done shelf life te testing on our on our made milk, and we've been able to certify it up to seven days, and been able to certify it for it to go beyond seven days. So, you know, just anecdotally from, from my own use, seven to 10 days is kind of like the range where I like to have it in, um, in my fridge. When right. I have pre -made milk. How would you know if it went bad though? I mean, I, I'm like, because I'm a chef, I just, I always, first thing I always do is smell yeah. everything. And if it smells so that, okay, then it's usually okay. <laughs> yeah, no. So, I mean, much like anything that has any sort of oxidiz oxidization exposure, it's, it's rancidity levels, PHC levels. So it'll you know, if, if it were to go rancid, you, you either smell it or give it a little taste and you'll know immediately whether, you know, the acidity is too high. Okay. So it, 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 you don't have to store this in your fridge, but it's okay if you wanted to. Correct. Okay, yeah. perfect. So Sherry says, I just ordered one of each. That's great. Just make sure if you order, you use hey, my Sherry. discount code. Yes, yeah. I hope you like it. Sherry, Chef AJ10. And uh, Tiffany can't wait to order. And Joyce says she's ordering. Diane says she's ordering. But Tiffany wants to know, any deals like buy three, get something off? Sure. So, um, 
you know, what, what we always try to recommend is if, if you subscribe as a member, um, what we like to sort of think of ourselves is, you know, let us be your new milkman or milkwoman and, uh, and we'll deliver it to your door on a monthly basis at whatever cadence you can kind of customize. Hey, you know, I'd like it once every two months. And we put you on a sort of permanent uh, discount um, subscription level. And not only that, we start, um, we're going to start rolling out a bunch of sort of member engagement um, perks that we're going to start uh, just giving to our members only. So absolutely. Terrific. Uh, Vicky says, do you ship overseas? Uh, we, we're going we're gonna to hopefully start shipping in 2021 overseas. It'll be to select countries. So uh, as we roll out new countries, we'll be announcing it on our website and through our social channels. Great. And Ellen said, how did you decide on the name Joy? But you said it's an acronym for just one ingredient. Yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, that's right. Yeah. So um, and I'll give you a little bit more more context there. So, again, Joy, just one ingredient. Um, you know, we love we love the the definition and, and sort of the the emotion that joy evokes. Um, who doesn't want to have joy in their life? And in addition to that, we kind of see sort of the, the future state of our company being more of a platform and a brand that our customers trust us to provide them with unique plant-based uh, ingredients that empower our customer base to do um, new sort of culinary creations. So again, we're focused on consumer, but also have a, a food service side where we're you know helping uh, chefs in kitchens, restaurants, cafes, uh, juice and smoothie bars. So, uh, you know, we, we really want to build a brand and a platform where, you know, one day, you know, hopefully I'll be able to sort of tell you, hey, we just launched this new instant uh, plant-based matcha latte line, and you'll be able to, to sort of have that at your fingertips. And you don't have to go through the full process of making, um, you know, the matcha and then the milk, and it'll all just be in, in, in a one easy sort of uh, usable format. Nice. Uh, Tiffany says, can't wait to see what other products are in your future. Valeria says, do you soak the nuts before processing? And can you tell us about any other products you sell? Sure. So we don't, we do not soak the nuts. Um, it's one of, you know, one of the reasons why we're doing this is we we're kind of skipping, uh, allowing you to skip a few steps uh, to make it more convenient. So we do not, uh, we do not soak. And uh and as far as uh, new products, we have we have a couple lined up. Uh, we're hoping to launch at least one, potentially two, by the end of the year. Uh, one of them is going to be more uh, geared towards uh, the coffee market, and another is going to be for the non-nut um, consumers. So those of you with with uh, nut allergies, um, I'm hoping to be able to to give you a solution very very soon. Thank you. I appreciate. I don't have a nut allergy, but I still like milks that are made out of things like seeds or oats or things like that. Absolutely. Tim says, "I assume I can make a creamer. I don't know how to answer that, but I guess he would just use less water, maybe." That that that's exactly right. So, um, again, if if um, we kind of we 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 have a bunch of recipes on our website, um, we have a, a recipes tab that you can go into, and in there we give you a lot of uh, suggestions. So, creamer is one of those. Uh, specifically if, if, um, if, if you're very specifically sort of passionate about coffee and how you want your coffee, uh, to froth with the milk and whatnot, um, what I urge you to do is, is, um, is actually play around with it. So you'll, you'll eventually figure out, you know, I want two scoops in, you know, X amount of ounces of water, or I just want one scoop. Um, and so, uh, to give you an idea, we're also working on a solution where, you won't even need a blender. So uh, hopefully we'll, we're, we're trying to get this to a point where you'll literally just be able to scoop our product up and throw it directly into your coffee, uh, basically eliminating the need to, to sort of pre-make any, any, um, any solution for it. Great. Uh, let's see. Tiffany says, do you have referral links to help spread the word? We do. Yeah, we have a, an affiliate program. Um, there's, a, there's a tab for that on our website. So if you're... Uh, want to become an ambassador and, and help uh, spread joy around the world, we, we'd love to have you uh, uh, join, uh, join as an ambassador. Yeah, and Christine is, is saying, uh, 
commenting that the shipping is very reasonable. And Sherry wants to know, is the skin left on the nut? Well, I mean, cashews don't have skin, do, do they? Only almond does, right? Right, so cashews don't have skin and the, the skin is removed from the almond. Um, so uh, we, do not, nice. we, do, we don't use the skin, yep. Very nice. Uh, Robin says she likes that it doesn't separate. Same here. Uh, Vicky said, are you ever thinking of exporting to Australia? We would love to export to Australia. Um, Australia is actually the, the second largest um, almond producer in the world after California. Uh, so there is a very um, sort of ripe market for us over there. Uh, and we've had many conversations with, with Aussies uh, that want to take us and, and sell us in Australia. So hopefully soon. Great. Um, there's a question on where the, where the nuts were from. Like, what, what, where, like where are you, I'm trying to find it exactly if they were from, here it is, from Linda. Where are the almonds from? Central Valley of California? That's correct. Yep. Nice. Jennifer we said, I'm so excited. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, all our almonds come from California. Nice. Jennifer said, so excited. I just ordered the two pack, one almond and one cashew free shipping. Very good. Um, um, Bikat says, I'm sorry if this was already asked already, how long are the containers good for once they are opened? Sure. Yeah. Once you open it, they, uh, they, they have the same shelf life. So 12 months on the cashews, 18 on the almond. Yeah. Bethery saying, is this live? Yep. We are live right now. So <laughs> you probably wouldn't be able to be posting right now if we weren't live. So let's see if there's any other questions there. Um, what is the difference between this and almond butter and cashew butter? Elizabeth wants to know. Sure, Elizabeth, it's, uh, it's mostly in the heat exposure. Uh, so our product as defined by um, the FDA does not fall under the, the guidelines and the definitions of, of nut butters. Nut butters, they're exposed to a high amounts of heat for extended periods of time, therefore chemically altering the, the actual raw material. We, we do not expose our, our raw material to heat. Um, we process it in a way where it actually retains uh, close to room temperature on, on our processing. Great. You know, I, we keep, I guess people tune in when they tune in and they keep asking about the shelf life, but I just realized it, it doesn't really say it on here. That might be something that would be help, used by, oh, it's shown on tub. You're right, huh? No? Yeah, so you... So here on this one, it, it says it uh, right, right up, right around the, the top line. Oh, yes, you're right. 2021. That's unopened. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, OK, well, this is great. How do you substitute the cashew joy for raw cashews in a recipe? Well, I, I don't think it's a substitute for raw cashews. It, it could be a substitute for cashew butter is what I'm thinking. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it, it can be a substitute for raw cashews as well. I mean, usually raw cashews um, call for soaking uh, prior to using them. Here in this instance, you won't have to soak them. Uh, you can just go ahead and, and usually just use them directly um, into the ingredient. Here's a great question from Tony from Diane. I'm in Arizona and it's still hot here. Will it melt during shipment? I can tell you this came on the one day that it was 122 and it had sat in my mailbox all day and I was concerned, but it's fine. So I'll let Tony answer that. Yeah, no, it, it, it shouldn't. I mean, uh, unless we reach temperatures, although, you know, we won't get into the climate change discussion, but <laughs> unless we reach much higher temperatures, uh, any near future, it, it should be fine in, in 120 degree heat. Okay. Tiffany says promo seems not to work. Just tried to order. Those of you that said you just ordered, for example, like, let's see, somebody else just said they ordered. Alicia, did it work? Because it's just the code is Chef AJ, no spaces, all caps. I tried it myself and it worked. Yeah, it should be. If you have any issues, um, yeah, let us know and we'll, we'll make sure you get the discount. Yeah. Well, thank you for doing this. I love, you know, letting people know about new, exciting things and especially companies where the people are vegan, not just creating vegan products, but because they're vegan themselves. And, and I really appreciate that. And I really like letting people know more about small businesses because that's really, you know, that's just something I'm passionate about, you know? And uh, so thank you for making such a, a yummy, easy to use, delicious product that's vegan. And thank you for being vegan. How long have you been vegan and why? Yeah, so um, I, I've been vegan for quite a few years now, and, and it basically, I kind of had a, 
uh, a coming to moment with my doctor, went in for a checkup and I have a long history of cardiovascular disease in my family, uh, both through my maternal side and paternal side and both through their sort of uh, family trees on both ends. And it just like, I just felt I was being surrounded by uh, cardiovascular disease in a very sort of um, intense fashion and form. And, and I went in for a checkup and basically the doctor said, I've never been overweight. I've actually been, you know, quite healthy my entire life. And, um, and the doctor essentially told me, look, you know, I'm going to have to start putting you on statins and you're pre diabetic you're basically kind of in this pre-diabetic phase right now. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I'm, I'm not even close to being over. He's like, it doesn't matter. It's just, you know, um, so that was kind of like a, a waking up moment. And, and, um, you know, from one day to the next, I, I, I knew, I knew the research I had, you know, was well versed in it. And, uh, I just never, I had, I had gone as far as I was gone as far as vegetarianism. Uh, but I had never eliminated dairy. And once I did that, it changed my life. And I mean, uh, I'm just upset that it, that it took me so long to do so. So, yeah. um, uh, I'm so glad you did that. Shirley just says, just ordered one each organic and picture and at work. Excited to get them. Well, yeah, thank you for, for going vegan. I Like I said, I, my first show today was Ingrid Newkirk of PETA. And I'm really even, not that I'm not going to be vegan after 43 years, but I'm yeah. even more committed that it's the right decision <laughs> for, for human awesome. health, the planet, and especially for the animals. Uh, Katharina says, any plans for hazelnut? Um, there, there are plans, actually. So, yeah, we... Uh, we feel hazelnut works really well in coffee, and so we're we're looking into into something in the coffee spectrum for that. Yeah, I know that you probably can't create a product just for me, but what I would love, Tony, is you know the, all the doctors I interview talk about the importance of omega three fatty acids and how flax seeds are like really one of the best sources. And yes, I just yes. never cared for the taste, but I would drink flax milk if you could make it for me. To no, that, that's uh, that's uh, definitely on the list. Um, we're actually trying uh, blends. So we're tinkering around with um, sort of the existing almond and cashew and then um, adding in uh, flax into it, milled flaxseed, um, which kind of activates it in, a, in an interesting and different way than, than the current state. So yeah, we're playing around with it. All right. Well, great. Where's the company located? So officially we're headquartered in Miami, Florida, but um, as any other 2020 business, we're kind of spread all over the country right now. We're a small team, but we're in New York, uh, Miami, uh, Minneapolis, Wisconsin, um, and LA, so. Well, I know that there's no probably no shows right now with the pandemic, but have you done any of those fancy food shows like the one in Orange County, you know, the, you know what yeah, I'm so about? We, yeah, so we're fans of fancy food. We've been, we've attended, but we haven't officially sort of taken a booth or any of that. Great. Well, it's been just such a pleasure uh, learning more about you and your company and your journey. And when Obar oh, wants to know where the actual factory is, it's in his basement. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, so so we actually we we produce in the in the Bay Area in San Francisco. Nice, nice. Well, when you get as you get new products, please let me know because I love to be. I feel like if I was born in another time of human history, I would have been the town crier because I just love letting people know about people that are doing interesting and great things in the world, especially things that are vegan and people that are vegan. So uh, really guys, give it a try. Cashew's my favorite, but almond's really good too. Easy to make. And my favorite part is it's been sitting here for an hour and it still hasn't separated and it tastes really, really good. And it's so easy to make that even my husband can do it. Oh, he <laughs> says, how do we get our local coffee shops buy-in? I love getting a latte out in my neighborhood and I hate that he uses box nut milks with added ug sure it's a great question we we do um if you follow us on social media uh we're really active on instagram and uh i think we have one coming up pretty soon but what we do is we actually do a contest um where everybody has their own you know i think i think the baristas are the new bartenders of of the world everybody kind of sits in their coffee bar and talks to the baristas about their their daily struggles and you know um so everybody has their local sort of favorite coffee bar. Um, so what we do is we, we, um, we, we set up a contest whereby um, you tag, you tag your, your coffee bar and, uh, and we'll reach out to all of them. Uh, but whoever wins will actually send free product where they can make basically, you know, a couple of days worth of, uh, of almond milk so that they can try it out and test it in their, in their store. 
That sounds great. And you know, whether you try this product or not, we so appreciate the fact that you're not using dairy, all those of you who are watching, as we learned today from Ingrid Newkirk and PETA about the rape rack and what really happens to dairy cows. Just the fact that you're just not using dairy is just huge. So we thank you for that. But if you want to try a product that does not separate, that's shelf stable, it's delicious and cost effective, consider trying either the cashew butter or the almond butter. Actually, I reversed it. They come both organic and not organic. And oh, yes, what is your Instagram? Louise wants to know. It's add ADD joy, A D D J O I. Okay, maybe I should follow you. If you follow me, I'll follow you. Well, Absolutely. it's so nice to meet you, Tony. And I hope you, I hope as you get the new products, you'll you'll let me know about them so that I can be Absolutely. I like to be the first to tell people about them. Thank you guys so much for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at eleven a.m. when Nick Devorn of Local Spicery will be making a dish that I cannot pronounce called Misa Wat, which is a spicy Ethiopian lentil dish. Thanks again, Tony. Thank you so much, Chef. Appreciate it. Bye.